Hi, hi, it's me, Chiyo. Welcome. So today we are discussing episode 9 of The Smart Money Woman. And I know it's not Saturday. I'm sorry I missed last Saturday. Okay, I my week was... So much happened to me last week, so I couldn't make this video. But I am here now, and the show must go on. So we'll just get right into the episode, starting with the book the chapter nine in the book. So it starts off with Zuri's point of view, going for Ladin's father-in-law's funeral. And the way it's introduced kind of sounds like it's something in passing. It sounded like it was something in passing the previous chapter. And now, even if it's the main thing, it still kind of sounds like it's just a by the way theme. And as Zuri's looking at what's happening from her perspective, she remembers her own childhood how the issue of when her when she lost her dad how the family didn't handle it well basically didn't treat her mom right and how it was because her mom had like a good friend there to help her that she was able to get back on her feet so she's just looking at Ladin's condition and seeing how basically it's not just that the father-in-law is dead but everything is gone apparently he was the so provider of everything even the work the husband had and everything he sponsored the whole family's lifestyle but he had a lot of debt and he kept his secrets so now all the banks have come to claim their money and property back so now they're in a mess so zuri is thinking of her own life by the contrast of it and when she talks about it she's like trauma aside she literally says trauma aside and it's like something serious happened to you. You get me like brush things and a drug and all that, but it just seems so. Maybe this is the time to actually delve deep into the emotions of Zuri. Let's just see how she was actually affected by this, not just brushing it aside. But okay, it's not her day. It's Ladin's. It's Ladin's life. Their family's day. Okay, so she's looking at Ladin and just seeing her friend is going through so much and Shola is there with Shola came with her because now they're together or something in the book Shola had Shola had gone to the funeral with her so he walks up to Ladin and like calls her attention but well, he calls her attention with a strong grip to the arm and I'm wondering why the strong grip man like personal space again again just saying like they're not close they know each other but they're not like tight she's mourning she's in a state she's not about to fall down she's okay in that sense so why grab don't look around but why grab her arm kind of like you could just say excuse me or maybe light touch if you must make body contact but anyways he grabs her arm to talk to her to get her attention to comfort her or at least Zuri thinks he's comforting her we don't know what he says let's assume he's comforting her but knowing uh what's his name Shola in my opinion he's probably berating her like oh you should have you should have had a job something I feel like that's the only kind of conversation he knows how to have he does just doesn't feel like the person that knows how, how to have um emotional um what's the word empathy yeah that word those conversations and that's coming from me so <laughs> not very kind but he does not have those conversations so whatever he says to Ladun, okay after talking to Ladun, she excuses herself because she still has things to do with the whole funeral going on and uh he shola joins the girls where they are uh this is there jury is there i don't know who else is there but the girls are there and of course he is now talking about how it's wise to have your own money and to have your own financial security and all that and while that is true still not the best place to talk about it and the issue comes up with that day so I'm talking about how i don't know what led to this but talking about how she and her husband have a joint account and i already know they have a joint account she's basically trying to tell the girls her problems and Shola feels like it's his in it's his place. 
his place to tell her what to do with her family's money and her money. My queen never agreed to have that conversation. So why is that me? So he's telling her about how it's wiser to separate the bank account and how she should do that. And that is good advice. It's just when it's not wanted, you can't really call it good advice when it's not wanted. So it's basically just the first label there is unwanted advice. And she gets defensive. But honestly, I just well, you should listen. You should listen because everyone is telling you that your husband is nothing. So it will be a very wise decision to separate your finances. You can't, you can't pour every single couple you earn into one account that you're sharing with someone who doesn't take financial responsibilities the same way you do, who you don't actually trust to anything, who's not even making up to the same money she's not even making money at all at this point that's the thing. he's not even making money at all so you're just putting everything for him and he's spending everything it's ridiculous and in her mind not separating the accounts is giving her marriage a chance is being patient is applying wisdom okay we all have our own definitions of wisdom and how long patience should last good for you adesra you do you but after the funeral or something, one of the events around the funeral, Adesua is now thinking about the situation and she's just wondering why, how her life has gotten into this, how, why her marriage is not going smoothly, why Soji is the way he is. And there's this, um, ex like this thing told to us about how he grew up in a family, like Soji's father was, Basically cheated on the mother, then left the mother for another woman. And he hates his father for that, he resents his father, but he's doing the same thing. And it's like, if you don't let go of hatred, if you don't let go of resentment, if you don't know how to forgive, like, I know these situations are painful, and I have never gone through this particular thing, so I can't talk on it. But letting go is part of healing for yourself it's not about the other person half the time it's about you so i guess this is what has shaped him to be who he is today he's still holding on to that and he's now doing that to his wife and of course he can't see it because tunnel vision and all that he's resenting his father and he's doing what he wants so he cannot really see the fact that what he's doing is the same character he resents but I'm not a counselor and this is fiction, so I cannot help them. And she's also thinking about how the whole thing affected Serge's mom and how um, her mom, his mom, hates her. Or rather, all of us, like, her, the way she says it, she used to like say mean things about her, little jabs about her looks, little jabs about um, her religion, like, just her life. And to Adesua, those were just small, innocent jabs. What is innocent about insulting someone, please? But that's how Adesua chose to see it. And so basically, now she's on the road, thinking about all these things and how bad the mom and son treat her. And she's still looking for Soji. And she she hasn't seen him in a few days. And she checks the back. Um, she gets an alert because she wants to stop to buy fuel for the house gen now that she's back home because... That's why she does like she's just going home to wait for her husband, but there's no light, so she has to pay for fuel or something to get light in the house. So she checks the account balance and it is gone. So her husband is running away with her money. So this is what happens in this chapter. It's about Ladun and Adesua's issues coming to light, just like the worst part of what they could go through finally happening. And it's almost the story is almost over so i don't know if their issues are going to be resolved i hope so as much as i've like been on their necks i really hope that their issue gets solved in this story i know it's fiction but come on the life's <laughs> it's tragic it's tragic so i really hope things are solved for them so from there we move into the episode the tv series and like i said la last week sometime the storylines have kind of just shifted so the same things are still happening just not exactly the same way and in the same pacing so the story this um episode nine starts off with 
what's his name, Shola and the company signing a contract and he looks so, he's supposed to be looking around for Zuri, but that is a very uncomfortable looking around look, if that's what, if that, it can be called that. And then they send the contract and they all stand up to shake hands and why is everybody in this scene so awkward? Like everybody's just looking for, oh, is, is that my cue to say something? Am I supposed to say something here? Just, yeah, that scene happens and he from there goes to look for Zuri now that the contract has been signed. So when he walks into Zuri's office, he's all, he's walking in. That's the best I can describe. He's walking in, he sits down and Zuri's just there flustered because it's Shola and she's just there looking at him and he's saying words and she's all like, ha 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 stuff. Anyways, I'm like, nothing this guy is saying is impressive, one, two, you are reacting way more than the scene. Like, the scene probably should have demanded that his acting just didn't carry it through. So now it just looks like she's acting way more than she should be acting in the scene. Like, oh my goodness, it's Shola. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. But he asks her out on a date. She says yes, and he says he'll call her. But from my understanding and from this conversation they just had, there was never an exchange of numbers and things have been professional all this while. Like that's the reason why he never approached her because he's trying to be professional. So they never exchanged contacts. So how did he get her number? Hmm? It wasn't a plot hole. He, like there was like, oh, I have your number. Like, oh, how did you get my number? Oh, never. We won't know kind of stuff. It's supposed to be mysterious how I got your number. No, that is wrong. That is an invasion of privacy. And yes, if a really hot guy had my number and I didn't know, I wouldn't fight him. I wouldn't feel like I wouldn't complain about it. But this is sure like he's really not that great of a catch in in the context of the acting mostly. And then the context of the aggressive behavior. Should I say he's aggressive? That he he started with like lack of personal space so yeah i don't like shola so i have a problem with him getting over and even if the guy was super cool super hot super rich super perfect i would still look at you sideways if you got my number without my permission especially if we we're having like a work relationship so that means i'd have to go through either a close friend of mine or through work neither of them had permission to share my number with you so even if i could forgive that it's still going to be a strike against you but she's okay with the fact that he got her number without permission for some reason i don't know but yeah they are into the date and she calls tammy because tammy is the hype queen of these kinds of things and she tells Tammy about the date or Tammy calls her anyways there's a talk about the date and Tammy's so excited because after uh, they ran into Shola in the movie she checked up on him and found out that he's the most eligible bachelor in Lagos every girl wants him apparently and there is like hmm they definitely want him for his money and not his personality obvious very obvious but he's still the most sought after, so good for him. So, as they're talking about how Tam is going to help Zuri get ready for the days, we go to Adeswa. And Adeswa is at work being the boss lady that she is. And there's this guy at her work, James, I think that's his name. James, he's very disrespectful. He doesn't, he's like, she's his boss, like his immediate boss. But he's so disrespectful to her and he actually like she calls she calls him out on it and instead of him like at least trying trying to act smart he's like just telling her that she's a woman know your place blah 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 rubbish 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 and he bumps her on the shoulder and I'm like what you bumped me on the shoulder i think i'll not drag you back right there but this one, and this one is a better one than I am. She stays classy in that event. And my mind is like, destroy this guy by hook or crook. Destroy this guy. And 
she does not disappoint me because it goes to like we see her doing interviews for people okay before i even get into this this random guy came into a law firm into law firm for an interview but he doesn't do law and he's talking about how he wants to join the it department and although she, he came in for the wrong reason at this point still kind enough to tell him that okay they do need to on the it department so she can she can direct him to human resources to apply for the job or probably help with the job or whatever but this guy doesn't even know how to use a computer he only knows it theoretically that's his, that's the fullness of his knowledge and like this guy you must be so brave you must be so sure of yourself to walk into an office with zero knowledge of anything and apply for that job like i have to, i've got to give props to your stupidity but yeah he came in for that job and of course she dismissed him because it's not serious and like she's continuing her interview and she's talking to someone who seems to have potential when that james walks in and he's complaining that oh it's his job blah, blah, blah. like yeah it's your job but you said you don't want to work for a woman so i'm getting a replacement to find someone who can work for me and she delivers this line james please call the next person on your way out perfection so this is the boss lady that i've seen at this one as and i want her to be and now take that same energy and apply it to your marriage because your marriage needs this energy okay so anyways we're seeing zuri tammy and of course ladu and these crazy girls who love shopping go on a shopping spree they're supposed to get like one dress for zuri's date and first of all there was no need to get a new dress because what's his name shola has not seen you in all your clothes i'm pretty sure with all the designer clothes you have there must be something in your clothes that you could wear on your first date but let's say you're the kind of person that enjoys buying new clothes for first dates one dress like it's one date so all you need is one dress you're supposed to be saving money remember but these two shopaholic of friends talk her into buying everything and now they overspend and like when they're there even getting makeup professionally done for a date um lara comes in to like she's coming from work so she comes in like oh yeah hey girls blah 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 and then she sees their shopping bags and it's like of course she gets really annoyed with them especially she, i don't know who she's more annoyed with but she's annoyed with all three of them um She's annoyed with Zuri because Zuri has succumbed to her addiction again. And she's annoyed with Tammy because Tammy is supposed to be working on money management. I'm supposed to be getting a loan. And Lara is the person doing all the hard work trying to sort through Tammy's finances to make sure that she's secure enough for a loan. And here she is shopping with money she doesn't have. So Lara gets upset. The girls are acting like, why are you upset? Blah, blah blah but yeah it's their life she's been a caring friend and she's like rightfully angry with them but she should not give herself headaches she should just leave them to do what they want to do with their lives and it's just when for someone like her she's seen stuff like this and she just wants her friends to be in this position but they don't get it they don't get bad things happen and being smart is smart so she can't talk them out of what they decided to do so she leaves and now zuri is dressed for her date with shola and they go he rents out the whole place <sighs> yeah i just i have so many thoughts on shola he rents out the whole place and they are having a date and it goes well i i, I guess we're, we're led to believe it goes it went well and now he's walked her out to walk her to the car and he leans in for a kiss and i'm not going to like i refuse to show the full thing because i don't put myself through that again if you like watching those scenes fine it's just that it's shorter 
so i'm not putting anybody through that i visibly cringed the first time i watched the scene i cringed again watching it for this video so i am not doing that to myself another time so that scene happened and then it's broken up thank goodness i mean uh, uh it's broken up that is the good part but unfortunately it's broken up because uh zuri gets a call from ladun and this is when we find out that ladun has lost her father-in-law so it ends on this sad note so this is what happens in episode nine and of course we already know that now ladun has to deal with the whole um financial issues this is going to cause and it's bigger than what is described in the book so when we get there i'll tell you more so saturday yes i'll still be releasing that video on saturday i will get into episode 10 of the smart money woman but for now that is it for today if you've liked this video don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe thank you for watching see you next time bye